good afternoon, everybody. So there is no coffee break now. Uh, so welcome to the seventh session about homomorphic encryption. And the first talk is entitled High Performance Fun Verkauter and Somewhat Homomorphic Encryption on GPUs, an implementation using CUDA. And the author are Ahmad Al Badawi, Barad, Barad Vaj Veravali, Chang Fung Moon, Kim Mimi Aung. And Ahmad will give the talk. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Thanks for being here at this time to attend our morphic encryption session. In this talk, I share with you my experience while developing or implementing the FV or some people call it the PFV, somewhat homomorphic encryption scheme on GPUs. And homomorphic encryption or fully homomorphic encryption, as everyone maybe know, it's uh, what we call the holy grail of cryptography. And the reason for that is because it allows you to compute on encrypted data. As you can see in the figure, the client sends that private data encrypted to the cloud. The cloud somehow can still manage to compute some useful functions on the data and return encrypted result to the client who has the decryption key and can decrypt and see the results in a clear text form. In theory, we can compute any function f. But in practice, uh, we are quite limited. And the, maybe the main challenge in homomorphic encryption is that it requires enormous computation. And how this problem is being handled, the performance issue on homomorphic encryption, I would say there are two directions. So one is trying to find the new schemas or techniques to improve the performance of FHG, like plain text packing, encoding schemes, approximated computing, probably squashing the target function that you need, and even DAG optimizations for the circuit that you want to compute. And there is the other direction who accept the status quo of FHE and try just to speed up what we have. Like we speed up the FHE basic primitives, like key generation, encryption, decryption, and homomorphic operations, addition and multiplication, and we use modular algorithms, parallel implementations, and even hardware implementations, such as GPU, PGA, and ASIC. And please let me add GPUs to this category as a hardware execution platform. So the contributions are implementing the FV on GPU, like this is the main contribution of this paper. We include a set of CUDA optimization and other algebraic tools also and we benchmark against state-of-the-art implementations of the FE. So now a question that may arise, why GPUs for FHE? Well, GPUs are becoming more naturally available. They include many, many computing cores, and they, are, they prove to be actually strong in handling parallel problems, or problems that include high level of parallelism. And it happens to be that FHE, or homomorphic encryption in general, has a huge level of parallelism, and that can be exploited by the GPUs. And that's why these two, like the platform and the problem, they seem to be a good match. This is the textbook FE. I will not go through the basic primitives, but I would like you to know, to emphasize that in this scheme, we deal with polynomials, and these polynomials happen to be very long polynomials. And also, the coefficients happen to be multi-precision coefficients, like thousands of bits each coefficient. Also, in this uh, one operation here that we focus on usually, which is the homomorphic multiplication, other than being computationally intensive, especially in the FV schema, there's a weird, I would, call, I would say, a weird operation in the homomorphic multiplication, which is the first one, this scaling T over Q. Some people call it scale and round. Others call it divide and round. It's not quite compatible with the representations we know about, uh, the, the representation we represent polynomials in. 
And also there's another one which is the base to composition. So how to do this in RNS or in NTT representations. The implementation requirements. We will need to do polynomial arithmetic, uh, apparently. And these polynomials, as I say, they are long. The degree can be a few thousand. We stick to power of two cyclotomics because they have nice uh, properties. Addition can be done linearly, multiplication in Cassie-linear complexity. And the coefficients, as we said, they are multi-precision, a few hundreds of bits. Uh, we use modular arithmetic, such as the RNS or CRT, to decompose them. And also, we use some techniques from Bajard paper to, to do the scaling and round T over QX and base decomposition. So first, let's see how the polynomials will be represented. Now, the Q, which happens to be the polynomial coefficient, we choose it as a smooth number. And it will be the product of many small primes, PIs. These primes should fit in the GPU or the execution platform word, machine word size. And the polynomial will be represented in this matrix, what we call the RNS representation. It is k by n, n is the degree of the polynomial, and k is the parameter that we can control, which is log 2 of q over log 2 of p. So by choosing the size of p, you can either increase k or reduce it. And it's important, actually, to try to minimize k as much as you can so that you don't do much transformations. In this representation, you can do, ultimately, infinite uh, number of abstract, abst uh, addition or subtraction by only doing uh, component-wise. Now, to do the multiplication, we need to go to another representation, which we call the NTT. And you will apply this operation for each row of the matrix. And once you go to the NTT, you can do addition, subtraction, and multiplication using component-wise operations. Now a question that may arise, what a transform to use? So we have so many transforms. There is the standard DFT, there is NTT, there is DWT, and what we use here in this implementation, the DGT, the discrete Galois transform. And in this table, we summarize like the pros and cons from our perspective for the, uh, of these transforms. So the DFT is well established. You can have many, several libraries that can you just use in your implementation. But the problem, the floating point errors will increase as n increases. And probably to mitigate this problem, you will either increase the precision of computing the DFT, which will affect the performance, or you can reduce the size of the uh, P, the primes, the CRT primes you use. And you will have, at this case, a longer matrix, and you will do higher number of transforms. Other transforms, which are the extension of DFT over Galois fields, like the NTT, DWT, and DGT, the nice thing about them, they are exact. But the difference between them is probably the transform length. In NTT, you will need to do 2N transform. And in DWT, you can do it using n. In DGT, you can do it using n over 2 transform length. And this is quite interesting, actually, because as we will see later, if you want to implement this transform on GPU efficiently, you will need to store the powers of the primitive roots of Unity. And on GPU, we are quite limited in fast memory. And you will need to try to shrink the size of these lookup tables as much as you can. And that's why DGT here happens to be quite useful for this problem. But there's one problem with the DGT is that it requires Gaussian arithmetic and will include a larger number of multiplications. But our hypothesis was, well, GPU is good in computation. Probably is not that fast in memory operations. So let's see what happens if we use the DGT. And eventually, we use the DGT in our implementation. 
So these are the common uh, equations of the transforms. As I said, you need to store these primitive roots in the lookup tables. And the nice thing about the DWT is that you, the DGT is that you need n over 2 of these roots. Now, the second question is how to compute the theoretical transform in GFP hat or in GFPI in the same field uh, primes that you use for the CRT. Well, we found that if you do it in GFPI, it's better. <sighs> let's, let, let's look at each uh, solution. So you can choose a nice prime, let's call it P hat, and let's take a use case. Let's say it's a 64-bit prime so that it can fit in the machine word size. The problem if you choose this approach is that you will need to take uh, to be careful that the, you don't trap uh, beyond P, P hat for the maximum convolution. So if you do one multiplication, this will be the maximum convolution value you get, and you will need to ensure that the param or the operands you start with are less than this bound. And this is only for one multiplication. In this table, you can see that for different n sizes, let's see. The, the size of the prime that you can use. So you can use, in case 2 to the power 12, 26, up to 24-bit primes only. And this means that your matrix, if n is large, will probably become longer, and you will have to do more transforms. And another thing. So here, we said that these primes will be like, let's say, 32-bit primes. When you choose this 6040-bit prime, the, the storage will double when you do the NTT. So you started with 32, and now you're working with 64-bit, so the storage is doubled. Whereas if you choose the other solution, where you compute the theoretic transform in each of the prime in different fields, you will not have these problems. So you can work with the same uh, uh, bit precision of the prime, 64 bits. There is no size doubling. And you can also support unlimited number of operations in this domain. Well, is this the theoretic transform important? Yes, it's very critical for the homomorphic encryption. In this diagram, we see the basic operations included in the FV schema. As you can see, the NTT is almost 50%. These are just different settings of the problem. NTT, almost 50%. And we also have the RNS tools for the base decomposition. And the scale and round, also they consume about 30% or 35%. So we need to pay attention to, these, to, to this particular operation. CRT, we also in the paper include an implementation of the CRT using the Garner algorithm. On GPU, we found that Garner algorithm is better than the classic algorithm of computing the CRT. And the reason is in this table, we show first the lookup table size. You will need k square for the classic computation. You will need less than that in Garner's. Not much less, but a little less. Thread divergence, which is an important concept in GPU programming, if you use the classic, you probably you will end up with a thread divergence, which will limit the performance, whereas in the GAN algorithm, there will be no thread divergence. But is CRT critical to performance? No, it's just in the input and output of the problem, so it's not that critical to the performance. And also, we adopted some of the tools provided by Bajard, Inyard, Hassan, and Zuki paper for adapting the FV schema to be RNS compatible so that we can do the scale and round and base decomposition in the RNS domain. In this flow diagram, we show how to do the homomorphic multiplication for this scheme. As you can see, we start by the ciphertext. Each ciphertext is two matrices. And for the RNS tools, these, these matrices will double in size. 
And then we do the DGT rule-wise for each matrix. We do the tensor product. And then we go back to the RNS domain to do the scale and round. And then we do the fast pace extension, go back to DGT to do the li relinearization. And what I want to point out here is that, as you can see, we keep going back and forth between NTT and RNS representations. It would be very interesting, actually, to do these operations directly in the NTT domain. I mean the scale and round and the base decomposition. Whether they can be done in the NTT, still an open problem. And So for the benchmarking, we compared our implementation with SEAL, the latest version of SEAL, which implements the RNS variant of the FV scheme. And we also compared with the NFL lib FV. For these basic primitives, the key generation, decryption, encryption, and homomorphic multiplication, plus the relinear, relinearization. Actually, the GPU can get us sometimes from I would say 30 to 40x speed up against these implementations. If you want the number, the exact numbers, you can refer to the paper. And I actually kind of thought ahead and thought that would this question will come from the audience, which is like which RNS variant of the FV should I choose or implement? In the literature, there are two variants actually of this scheme. The first is due to Behes, Bajard, Inyard, Hassan, Zuki, and the other one is due to Halevi and Polyakov and Shub. And the answer for that can be found in this paper where we analyzed both schemas in terms of performance, noise analysis, and you can find the answer for this question in the paper. Thank you very much. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Ahmed. Uh, is there any question? There is no question. So I have one. Um, uh, so you present in slide uh, 11 many different uh, transformations uh, for the an entity. And uh, have you tried to test uh, which is the best, or you uh, just implement one? We tested, actually. We tested the uh, DGT and DWT. So and in terms of performance, one-time performance, I would say they both like comparable. Sometimes DGT is even faster, but not that much, a little. But the most important thing, actually, is that, as I said, DGT use n over 2 transform, which means you will need less or smaller lookup tables, which is very uh, an important factor in GPU development. OK. Thank you. So si since there is no more question, we will move to the next talk. Uh